Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video of how I painted sea turtle in a coral reef. I don't know too many people who don't like sea turtles, or any turtles for that matter. They're such, such a beautiful and wise creature. So interesting. So much to look at into their eyes and their face and see reflected back. Anyway, I love to paint these creatures just because they fascinate me and they're beautiful. So let's paint. I began this painting with a light sketch in pencil. And then I decided if I was going to do the background with the kind of imprinting technique I wanted to use. I probably should use some masking. So I applied liquid masking around the edges of the turtle and on some of the internal areas where the turtle would remain very light. I decided to make some coral at the very bottom and I had just gotten some new paint called Quinn Coral. The color was beautiful. I wanted to see if I could make it work for this painting for the bottom of the sea. So I'm mixing together some of the Quinn Coral. I'm mixing in some Quinn Gold. And of course I brought in some Viridian and some Turquoise for the background. The first thing I'm doing is wetting down the area and the paper all around the turtle. He has been protected from this paint and this wet on wet technique from spreading with masking fluid. So I've done the lower area first. And I'm bringing in some very dark indigo mixed with some cobalt blue. Quickly then, I brought in Viridian. I brought in my Quinn Coral and my Quinn Gold and allowed them to mix together. And then I brought in my turquoise paint. When I was satisfied that it was as intense as I wanted it to be, I placed some salt on top. And then I arranged some plastic wrap. Now you see I'm arranging it in folds so it will look like water currents going through behind the turtle. Sometimes that works, so I'm giving it a try. And now I'm going to repeat at the top. Very much saturating the area. I allow the water to soak into the paper just a little bit. And while it's still good and wet, I'm coming in around the turtle into the background areas. Again, I'm using indigo, I'm using turquoise, I'm using some yellow ochre, and I'm using some viridian green. Putting the plastic wrap onto the wet paint does pull some intensity of color off. I don't know if you could tell, I just splattered in some yellow ochre on the wet background. But you saw me block off the turtle to make sure it didn't splatter where I didn't want it when I did that thing. If you want your paint to be good and intense and you're using plastic wrap, I recommend that you use a lot of paint because as it dries, it gets lighter and the plastic wrap will definitely pull off some of the paint. What do you think? I always love seeing the impressions, the lines, and the textures left by this kind of treatment. I'm brushing off the salt. And 
I'm jumping right in with my warm colors that are the part of the turtle that tie them together with the background. This is a painting of warm and cool colors dancing in a play. The water itself is definitely a cool color, but I've added the warm colors at the bottom in the coral. These sea turtles, I've looked at many, many photographs of them, and they could be almost gray to being almost orange. So I'm using a combination of blues and oranges for my basic colors. The real name of these kinds of creatures is green sea turtle. So there actually is a lot of green in many of them as well. I can paint in these scales quite freely because I did all that masking for the areas between the scales and on the shell. Looking at turtle anatomy is not something I do every day, so I really have to study my reference photo to try to get how that flipper in the front comes in front of everything, how it partially hides some of the shell, and how the folds and the wrinkles in the skin show the dimension of it coming forward, because there is definitely foreshortening in this picture. There's also some shells and some plates that go around the bottom for armor, as well as some scales. Now I'm painting the scales in first, allowing them to dry, and then I'll paint back over top of them. That will allow the basic forms to show, but soften the lines that I've painted in. Many, many layers went on to this particular turtle. He took a long time, but he deserved it. He was a beautiful guy. I'm using intense blue, viridian green, some quin gold, and some yellow ochre. There's also some burnt sienna in the back flipper that goes away from us, as well as in the shell. When I want to get really dark, I'm mixing together some hooker's green dark and some indigo. Right now I'm building the structure of this front flipper. It curves, it's in play, in action, pushing the turtle forward. It also goes back and underneath, and ultimately down underneath to the belly parts of the turtle. It took a lot of work to figure it out even. So what I'm doing now is slowly building up glazes of color to show where the shading is, and simultaneously painting in the wrinkles and the scales in this underneath the fin area. I'm taking it slow with the buildup because these folds and this coloring are quite subtle. Nothing is sharp and crystal clear, and the water itself is muting some of the image. As the shell on the top curves down and goes under, it gets darker. So I've built up several layers of color in that area to make it clearly delineated where the shadows are. There's a pretty turquoise green showing all through the lower parts of the turtle. I guess it's reflected 
from the water and from the light hitting the bottom. So I've painted in the layers of that along with some wrinkles. And there will be more layers going on. You see, in many places, there was some yellow and yellow ochre showing on the turtle's lower body as well. So I'm including them. It helps to keep the turtle's colors warmer and relate him to the coral on the bottom. So I'm happy to do that. There are several areas that have not yet hardly been touched, which is the face of the turtle, the eyes, the front of the, of the prominent flipper, and the areas of the coral, which are still, still masked off. So I'm beginning to fill in with the face, but the masking is still in place. But this at least give me an idea of the approaches that I want to take because the face is quite important. And if I don't make it right or I make it so that it appears anatomically incorrect, the picture may be wrecked. So this is mapping out where it's going to go. Where the paint is easily sticking is where there is no masking applied. Now you see I'm working in the folds and the creases around the mouth with lines and then I will soften them when I put the color on top. So the lines will continue to show through as mouth and as creases and as shadows. I'm looking closely at my photo reference to see how the front muzzle nose part of the turtle is put together and how the colors are curving around it and how they're reflecting off of it. I'm painting in the colors I see and I'm trying to shade them where they curve under. And with that I can leave the face and go back to this flipper which is complicated in its anatomy and in its foreshortening. As I paint in the colors, I'm trying to show that they are curving around the flipper, which is a rounded structure of the turtle's body. If I painted them flat across, they would not look, not look rounded. So the part that is the closest to the viewer is the part in front of the shell. The whole thing starts to move back and go under the shell as it goes lower and toward the bottom of the picture. And putting in this dark along the far edge of the flipper really makes it stand out more, doesn't it?
So you could see I've painted it in, I've blended it out. I've tried to make the shadow soften, but be firmly there. And I'm trying to curve the shadows around at the bottom to show how they retreat and recess into the turtle's lower parts of his body. Remember those cartoon characters, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? They were always depicted with very well-developed chests and abs. But I am sure that this turtle has muscle on muscle and is so beautifully adapted with his anatomy to his environment. But the artists of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles probably had it right with those very strong muscles. One of the reasons that they were successful as a cartoon character was, again, that everybody loves turtles, or just about everybody. Just an artistic note for you. Moving on. I'm painting darkness around the coral. I've removed some of the masking from the coral. And since I want the coral to really stand out against the other colors of the water, I figure I'll put some strong darks around it. I'm also painting some strong darks around the lower parts of the turtle's face and neck because I want them to stand out as well. And here comes the rest of the masking off as I erase it. And that takes a while because just about everything having to do with masking takes a while. But it really does work well. And I guess it's worth the inconvenience. You could see how differently everything looks where I'm removing the masking. Now I can paint everything in unimpeded by masking blocking me. It also stops me from freely making mistakes. So I have to be a little bit more careful now because the masking isn't going to block my mess ups. I begin to come in and tidy up where I've over masked and put down the paint where it's needed also to soften the edges where the masking is running into the paint and I want the paint to be more filled out in those areas. So I put in the paint and then I blend. This involves a lot of applying paint, blending paint, making shapes bigger and blending out the edges. I continue to work into the face until I'm fairly satisfied <clears throat> at that point with the, with the scales that are on the face and around the eyes. And then I have to re-darken the shadowed area under the shell and the turtle's body because most of the masking when it was removed came off with that darkness. I'm evening out the top parts of the shell covering over areas that are too white and need a little blending. And I'm continually adding more color to make it tie in with the idea of the green turtle, with the yellows, the ochres, and the burnt siennas that go into the shell and parts of the turtle.
I've put a good amount of time into this turtle at this point. And when I sit back and look at it, I say, okay, i got to tackle this coral. I have to soften the tops, and I have to add more color where it's so white. And then I have to get back into this turtle, and I have to enhance him and accent him, because his colors are all a little bit too uniform. And I need to get some strong shadows and accents in there to make him stand out more. If I kept all that white in the coral, it would make the coral too important and too exciting. Whereas the turtle is supposed to be the more exciting or important part of this painting. What I'm doing is painting a light shade of Quinn coral on top of where the white areas are then I'm softening them with my brush and with blending, as well as blending them into the background color a little bit to incorporate them more. And I think it worked pretty well. So I'll be moving on to my next sections. And this is shadows, accent colors, getting some good strong dorks in there. In some cases it's also going over and removing some dorks where I wanted to enhance the whites between the shell plating. Fine tuning adjusting. And that is what this whole last part of my painting is about. In some areas I'm building up second, third, fourth layers of color. In other areas I'm softening between the plates of the shell. In some areas I'm softening and adding some shadows to the colors of those whites between the plates because they're further down and they're curving away from the light at the top of the painting. I paint them in with a light pale gray color and then blend them toward the edge. And that's exactly what I'm doing in this part of the painting. To make everything look more natural and not so stark white. I've mixed up a strong dark color and I brought some of the color into the coral to add some good shadows in there. It sounds like my dog wants to help me to uh, verbalize this video here. So excuse me while I shut the door. Because I don't need any help, we're almost done. I'm adding some more color to some of the scales so they'll stand out a little stronger. Adding some shadows next to the front flipper so the lights of the front flipper will stand out a little bit more. And my dog, Jazzy, certainly does have a lot to say. But I don't think it's going to help you watercolorists out there. So please excuse. I decided to really vivitize the colors of the front flipper right where they're closest to the viewer. And now I'm further softening the whites between the scales in the other flipper. 
I've also done that in the lower parts of the turtle's face. I'm doing some assessment by covering over different sections. It's pretty obvious to me. Oh, that works, and oh, that's not clear. And what I need to add and where I need to add it. When I assess with using the covered paper manner. In this case, I saw that I needed to add some stronger colors in the background toward the top. I wet down the paper. In those areas, I put the color down and then I softened along the edge with a damp brush. And I do believe this will do it and the painting will be done. And there we go. I've signed it and it's done. I hope you enjoyed watching how I painted Sea Turtle in the coral reef. Green, the great green turtles of the ocean. Beautiful creatures. I always enjoy painting them. And this time I really challenged myself a bit with some of the anatomy in the, from the shot that I used. This was a photographic shot. Again, permission was granted by the photographer. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. I hope you'll subscribe. And I'm happy to answer or try to answer any questions or comments that you might make. There's some links below that you can check out to products I like to use, to products I create, and to some different pages I run, like my Facebook art page. Uh, I run a blog and write my thoughts about art and about life. All these links are down below. I hope if you subscribe, you'll check out our next painting. And thanks so much for being here today. See you next time.